Booyah! What is up, beautiful people of YouTube? Andy Kruger here, coming at you with another live. Now, if you're new, the way these things work is I'm going to discuss... Sorry, I'm going to discuss a topic in dog training that I find to be very important. So if you just want to hear my thoughts on how to socialize your puppy or your dog, stick around for the first five or ten minutes. But if you're feeling froggy, stick around even longer and you can hear me answer a bunch of questions that come in in real time. So here we go. First and foremost, got to plug myself, patreon.com slash Andy Kruger, subscription-based service, which means you got to pay a little bit, but there I put all my unedited training videos, behind the scenes, step-by-step -step stuff that I would never post anywhere else, patreon.com slash Andy Kruger, check that out if you'd like, and my merch, of course, boom, get you a shirt. Click the link in the description to any regular YouTube video I post every single Monday. Okay, that's out of the way. Socializing your puppy. One of the most broad topics in dog training. You could type that into Google and be taken a billion different ways. I'm just going to cut through all that blah, blah. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you should socialize your puppy. I'll tell you exactly how I socialize my puppies. I'm going to start by telling you what you should absolutely not do with your puppy or dog to socialize. Never do you want to socialize your puppy or dog out on a walk. I said it. I said it. Do not socialize your puppy on a walk. And I know people are going to be going, what the heck, Andy? What are you talking about? Here, one reason why you should never, ever do that. So you get a new puppy. You throw them on a harness. You throw them on a retractable leash. Two things that I'm not against at all. And you want to take a little spin around the block with puppy. Oh, look, there's my neighbor with their dog. Let's let the puppies meet. Oh, how cute. And don't do that. You're out on a walk with your puppy. That's between you and your puppy. If you teach your puppy, yeah, go up. Say hi to this dog. Play with this dog. Interact with this dog. Yeah, yeah, friendly, they play, I'm happy, social. You do that, you do that again, you do that again. 10 weeks old, 12 weeks old, 16 weeks old, you're socializing your puppy on a walk. Two, three months later, you're gonna turn around to your puppy and you're gonna, which is now turning into a dog, and you're going to say, hey, you know how um, we approached walks in the past? You know everything that I taught you to do on a walk for the last two to three months? Yeah, yeah, very cool, very cool. So check this out. Now I need you to do the exact opposite. How do you think that's going to go? It's going to go badly. If you're interested at all in training, which if you own a dog, you absolutely need to be. If you're watching this video, you're probably interested in training. If you have the slightest interest in training, teaching leash manners, teaching a beautiful heel command, if you're interested in those, socializing your puppy on a walk is the exact opposite of those things. So when you get a puppy, you go, yeah, it would be great. It would be necessary to have my dog mind the leash. It would be necessary to have my dog walk next to me in a beautiful heel, no matter what's going on. If you let them meet other dogs on a walk, that's communicating the exact 
opposite of that goal. A walk should be, I take my puppy out. It's between me and my puppy. My puppy can sniff the environment. He can explore. That's all fine and well. But if you teach, ooh, see a dog, there's a reward there. See a new person, oh, there's a reward there. A few months later, how are you going to turn around and tell your puppy, can't do that anymore? You know all that stuff that I imprinted in your foundation? Eh, scratch that. It would be like if you're teaching a kid to drive and you say, hey, um, you have to stop at red lights and you have to go on a green light. That's it. Black and white. That's the law. That's what you have to do. And you train them that way for several months. And then one day you tell them, so on red lights, you're just going to go. On green lights, you have to stop. That's what you're doing with the dog. Don't socialize on a walk. It's the polar opposite to the training goals that you're going to want for your dog in the future. The walks between me and you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, then, Andy, how the heck am I supposed to socialize my puppy? You need to curate and design specific interactions with specific people and specific dogs in a controlled environment aka it's going to take a little work the dog park is the worst possible place you could ever bring a dog i did a whole live on that several weeks ago you can check that out it's called our dog parks bad the answer is yes i'm sorry it's yes and I go through a laundry list of reasons on why. But a dog park? Oh my gosh. You have no idea what dogs are there or what dogs are going to be there. You have no clue how they're going to approach your puppy. And all it takes is two seconds to completely obliterate any good mentality that your puppy could have moving forward. Putting your puppy with the right puppies, with the right dogs, is everything. You are the sum of the closest people that you surround yourself with, and so is the puppy. They're going to be influenced in so many ways by these strange dogs that they're friendly. It's no good for training. You're teaching your dog, hey, when we're uh, out off leash and you see a dog charge up to it and play when you see a dog charge it play and then you're going to turn around the next time you go out in public and you're going to go oh yeah so remember all that stuff i imprinted in you where i told you yeah just sprint up to that dog well you can't do that anymore this causes conflict that causes reactivity how many dogs you know go to daycare go to the dog park and they're leash reactive well once i take them off leash or let them meet the dog they're fine they're reactive because they're frustrated and conflicted because they can't get to that dog which is what you taught them from day one if you want to socialize your puppy they must first learn to be neutral neutral i have a client that just brought home an eight week old puppy two young kids they're all crazy about the puppy because it's fluffy and cute and the puppy is all over the kids being rough blah 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 same old story i said the puppy needs to learn to be neutral around you and the children before we can get down there and interact and play with them because if they don't achieve neutrality first in their foundation from day one, you're going to have a crazy uphill battle that's going to be full of co conflict because your puppy's going to be confused. They said, well, then how do we do that? I said, bring the puppy out, have the puppy on leash, have everyone in the same area as the puppy, and everyone ignore the puppy. Yeah ignore it it's jumping it's biting it's wanting to play 
we're ignoring you, you have to be neutral, we decide when play and interaction starts. Two minutes goes by, five minutes goes by. Puppy goes, okay, no action here. <sighs> hey buddy, good boy. They must be neutral first. And the client said, oh, I don't know if my kids can do that. I totally get it, but you're not gonna have a neutral puppy if you can't train the people that are gonna be around your puppy. Neutral first. The puppy should meet your family and close friends. That's who they should meet. And if they can't be neutral around them first, if you can't train them to be neutral around your puppy first, you're not going to have a neutral puppy. You're going to have a puppy that always sees a person or always sees a dog and sees value. They see reward. They forget about you. You don't have any value. I want to play with that dog. Hence, starting your training off on the totally wrong foot. And to end, you guys got to remember that genetics are almost everything. They're almost everything. So if you have a dog who's nervous or I don't know if I like dogs so much, that dog's telling you something. You have to work with the dog that you have not the dog that you want, not the dog that you pictured. You have to take information from that dog and put them in situations that's appropriate for them. To socialize your puppy, you need to carefully curate in a controlled environment with people and dogs that are on the same page and you need to carry that session out once a week three times a month, whatever it is. They don't need to play and meet new dogs every single day. That will actually be a detriment to your training. If you learn how to play with your puppy, you learn how to train the puppy, you learn how to build the correct lifestyle for the puppy and learn how that changes as the puppy changes, then you're gonna be successful. You need to control it. And their genetics will dictate what they're capable of, what they're willing to do, and what they can take on. You have to honor the dog and not just think about, I want the dog to do this. I want the dog to do that. Think about it. Don't socialize on a walk. Don't socialize at the dog park. You set those experiences up on your own turf with dogs that you know that have been proven to be good in those situations, period. Don't let your dog meet a bunch of people and dogs on a walk because if you're interested in training in the slightest bit, that is going to set the standard for the opposite of what you want. Okay socialization feel free to hit me with questions about that follow-ups as we go through but now let's get into some questions what do we got here all right good morning everyone thanks for you do andy thanks for all you do thank you emily let's go yes andy here from spain what's up what's the reason for not liking the gentle leader Gentle leaders are terrible. Gentle leaders don't teach the dog anything. It's an apparatus that you wrap around the dog's face to try and stop them from pulling. But you can try to stop something. It doesn't mean that you're building something. The minute that that apparatus comes off of their face, your dog is going to pull. Gentle leaders are not a substitute for teaching heel. Teaching heel is hard. It's a skill set. It takes a lot of learning, a lot of trial and error. Teaching heel is probably one of the most difficult things the average person could train a dog to do. Sit down, stay, heel. It's difficult. If it wasn't, everyone's dogs would heal nicely. The gentle leader is not training your dog. It's an apparatus that's designed 
to try and stop something. The minute it comes off, your dog has learned nothing. So I don't like the gentle leader because it's a shortcut and it's a way out of actually learning how to train your dog. That's why I don't like them. BH killed, on does whatever's next. Nice job, Jordan. So Jordan is a relatively new dog trainer, one of my Patreon members. He just did a BH uh, with his dog. Seems like it went awesome. Congrats, the BH. It's a temperament test for the, the dog sport, Schutzen, IPO, IGP. It's all the same. They keep changing the name. Good job, Jordan. Keep it up. Andy, first live. All right. Morning from San Antonio, Texas. Let's go. Good morning. Lots of let's goes. I must say that a lot. I can't deal with all the new. Can they say hello? No. No, they can't. Yeah, me neither. Good evening from Sweden. I'm very interested in the topic today. Can't wait. Thanks for being here. When I stop giving my Rottweiler free roam space and interacting with humans and other dogs, he listens to me more and his obedience is much better. Thank you, Andy. I can't stress enough. That's great to hear. I can't stress enough. You need to be the most valuable thing to your dog. You own them. You're responsible for them. You buy their food. You pay for their medical care. You pay for the roof over, your, over their head. If you're not the most important thing to your dog, you've done something wrong. If you're on a walk and they see a dog and you let go of the leash and they just charge to that dog and forget all about you, a strange animal has more value than you. That dog doesn't buy their food. That dog doesn't take them to the vet or put a roof over their head. You need to be the most valuable thing to your dog. You need to learn how to train them, learn how to play with them, and learn how to design an appropriate lifestyle for their age and where they're at in their training. Signed up for Patreon. Awesome. Thank you, George. That's good to hear. I got a boatload of new Patreon material that I've just been meaning to upload. I'll definitely get to it this weekend. Good stuff. Some new e-collar stuff, some raw stuff. It's good. Raw feeding. Let's go. Puppy coming in early January. So excited. Thinking about doing Mondio or IGP. Awesome. How do I sign up for Patreon? You go to patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. Yeah, made the live. Hi from San Diego Mountains. What's up, Catherine? Here's Ashley. Hey, everyone. Andy, can you describe your expectations for your first competition with Freddie? What will the building be like? What will the buildup be like? What kind of mistakes might be normal for his first time out? Good question. I plan on putting Freddie on the trial field uh, spring of next year. Um, so let's see. What are my expectations for the first competition? Well, my expectations are a perfect score. That's my expectations. Um, what's the buildup like? Yeah, so an easy way to put the buildup. How do you peak your dog up to that trial day? French ring is exceptionally difficult because the exercises are always the same. They're in a different order each trial, but they're always the same. And people think, well, that makes it so much easier for the dog. They know what's coming. The opposite, actually, makes it more difficult because when dogs know what's coming next, they anticipate, and that's when you get in trouble. Down, stay. I'm about to send you downfield to attack the decoy. The dog knows, oh, I'm about to go downfield and attack the decoy. I'm so excited. Boom! And they anticipate. So a program like French Ring is the most difficult because the dog knows the exercises. So the buildup in training, I have to design my training so what's next is completely unpredictable to the dog. I put him in a downstay and the decoy runs down the field. He doesn't know if I'm gonna send him, call him into a heel, turn around, take him back the other way. He doesn't know. 
So when I'm building up to a trial, I don't practice the exercises exactly like they will be in a trial. That's a rookie mistake. I practice all the elements of it, but if I do a good job on trial day, it's completely random to my dog. Even though it's not to me and the humans involved, it's random to the dog. So that's what the buildup's like. Uh, mistakes for the first time on the field. Yeah, mistakes happen when the dog's new or even seasoned to the trial field. Um, there's a bunch of people there that aren't normally there. Um, the field is freshly painted. The smell of other dogs that my dog doesn't normally smell are all around. The dog's completely naked. So there's zero training equipment. There's no corrections that happen. There's no rewards that happen. Um, so you get some weird stuff that happens there. You know, I can't tell you the amount of times someone walked off the trial field and said, oh, they've never done that before. So all of those elements can influence the dog. It's just like if you're playing a sport, it's one thing to practice. It's another thing under the lights when the pressure's on and it counts. So the dog can feel that pressure. The dog can feel that stress. And performing under stress and anxiety is definitely a developed skill set. So those are kind of some of the things that I think about going into my first trial. All right, I'm scrolling. What do we got here? Good morning from Brazil. What's up? Good evening from Denmark. Hey, oh. Patreon crew, love the lives from UK. P.S. She bites. Think about an S there. We also have she bite shirts. Glad to hear it. Hello from Wyoming. Beautiful. I just got a rehome German Shepherd, little over a year, who's reactive and he has overexcitement issues. How would I go about working through some of these already established issues? So Sadie, you have to take months to develop bulletproof engagement, being the most important thing to your dog. So if you're out on a walk and the dog's reacting and barking his head off at dogs, people, squirrels, cars, trash cans, you're not the most important thing to him. So watch my free YouTube video, what is engagement? takes a little puppy. I show you exactly how I start my engagement training. Of course, there's more on Patreon, but you need master level engagement. You need to be able to have eye contact with food, with a toy, eye contact while there's other dogs in the area. If you don't have that, don't take that walk. Off topic, can training an object guard promote resource guarding if done wrong or the wrong dog? So in ring sports, there's an exercise called the object guard. It's where you place an object down in French ring. It's a basket and the dog has to be on top of it and guard it. Meaning when the decoy comes and tries to take it, they have to stop him from doing that by biting him and then letting go and going back to the basket. Can training an object guard promote resource guarding if done wrong? I'm sure it could. Um, Almost any bite exercise can go wrong if you don't have the right training in the right dog. So I would say, yeah, I'm sure that that could happen. Hey, Andy, do you have two barking commands? One for bark on handler, the other for bark on target. That's a good question. I have with dogs in the past, but I don't with my current dogs. Just because there's not... So what they're referring to is two bark commands, meaning... Your dog barks at something in the environment away from you or your dog barks at you. I don't like the dog barking at me. There's not a time where I'm ever going to want my dog to bark at me, but there's certainly times I'm going to want him to bark at something else, whether it be a decoy, someone in plain clothes, whatever. Um, so I only teach one bark command. It's a guard command, an alert command, and it's for the dog to bark at something away from me. Personally, I just don't want a, my dog barking at me, but it's possible to train both for sure. What if you don't have friends that can come to your home to socialize your dog? 
Well, then you're in a pickle, Hugh. Then you're in a pickle. You don't have the right resources to curate those interactions. So you're going to be at a deficit there. How long does it take to learn a dog to heal consistently? One to two years. Happy Patreon from Sweden. What's up? Crating the dog is forbidden here. Yep. One argument is that dogs are social beings and should not be isolated in crates. Thoughts on that? Um, here are my thoughts. I believe in crates. Crates are a tool. And just like any other tool, they can be misused. I can go out and buy a hammer and build something beautiful. I could go out and buy a hammer and whack someone over the head with it. It doesn't mean that hammers should be banned and that they're dangerous. It means that they are a tool and in the wrong hands, they can cause harm. A crate in the wrong hands can be absolutely abusive to a dog. Lock them in there and never let them out. That's horrible. You're abusing the dog using a specific tool. But guess what? If you outlaw crates and they're never allowed, you could go to the hardware store and get a bunch of lumber and you could build a wooden box with a door and you could lock the dog in that. So I don't think that the problem is the actual tool. I think it's how people use it. Now the laws in other places, I can't really speak on. I'm sure they have their reasoning for that, but you know, I'm certainly glad I live in a place where at least for now, tools are allowed to be used by responsible people. Crate training is massive and I believe in it quite a bit. Hello from UK, finding it hard to teach heel to my male. He comes to the side for a treat, but when it turns, he goes back to pulling. So you never wanna teach heel on a walk. You never wanna teach heel there. You need to teach it in a room, in a driveway, in a garage, in a basement. Teaching heel is ridiculously hard if you're not a legitimate dog trainer, meaning like it's what you do for a living. You compete all around the world. Um, you've trained and competed with dog after dog after dog. Training heel is massively difficult. So you should find it hard to train heel. It's a very difficult behavior to train. Having a, getting a six pack is very difficult but that's why it's valuable. If you could do 10 sit-ups and get a six pack, everyone would walk around with it and no one would care if you had one because they're easy. It's the same thing with heel. It's valuable and it's impressive to see because it's very difficult to achieve. So it's gonna take three to four months of perfect training to start to see some results there. Thank you, Andy, knowing that she doesn't need to meet Anyone and any dog on a walk while we're out socializing takes a huge pressure and weight off me. Absolutely, she don't need to meet anyone. Again, genetics. Your dog's social, your, do your dog is not social. This is built into the dog. They spend eight weeks before you get the dog puppy socializing with the other puppy, socializing with the mother. It's built in. Hey from Greece, what's up? Happy Saturday. Fellow Andrew K here. I like you already. First time catching one of your live streams. My favorite trainer. Love listening to expertise on dogs and their mentality about things. Thank you, Andrew K. I appreciate it. How to train a dog to become responsive to his commands. Used to be very good with listening and now he doesn't even what to try anymore. How to train a dog to become responsive to commands? Well, you need to be the most important thing to your dog. You need to be the most valuable thing to your dog. If you believe that your dog knows something, like a sit, and they don't execute that first time every time, they're not motivated to work for you. You're not valuable to them. You're too predictable, you're too boring, other things are more exciting than you. So I'd say that's your problem. And I bet your engagement is lacking quite a bit too. Okay. Lost my place in the questions. I'm scrolling.
Bear with me now. Okay, here we go. Some parents from my town buy their seven-year-old daughter a male Belgian Malinois puppy for their first dog. They don't have any knowledge about dog raising and training working dogs. Worst thing. That is the worst thing. It's incredibly irresponsible, and those dogs are going to pay the price and suffer because the humans want something that they don't understand. Oh, well, we want this, so we're going to get it. But you don't understand it. So you're not honoring the dog. You're just fulfilling what you want. Very dangerous, especially with a Malinois. Are you going to do more decoy helper work next year? Thinking about coming down to get some work in. I'm always doing decoy work, my brother. Always. Always, always, always. I'm decoying multiple times every week. Let's go. Have you done other dog sports like IGP and IPL? I have. I've done a couple other dog sports. And if so, why'd you focus on French ring? Yeah, I used to do IGP. I used to do PSA as both a handler and a helper slash decoy. I went to French ring because for me, French ring is the king of dog sports. French ring is the most difficult dog sport that there is. There's the most variables and there's the most challenge from the decoy. You could do 50 face attacks with 50 different decoys and every single one is different to the dog even though on paper the exercise is the same. So I went to French ring because for both a handler trainer and a decoy, it's by far the most difficult. How do you deal with a dog that has not been socialized as a puppy and lunges at other dogs? The easiest way might be to correct that behavior with a prong. Absolutely not. This is the opposite of how you use a prong collar. You never implement a prong collar for punishment. Definitely don't want to do that. You're going to further damage the dog. How do I deal with a dog that's not socialized and lunges at other dogs? That doesn't come from not being socialized. That comes from their lifestyle and every experience that they've had 24-7, 365 leading up to that point. So the way I would deal with that is I wouldn't put the dog in that situation for now and I would develop master level engagement. I would become the most valuable thing on earth to my dog and train my dog that every interaction that we have is by far the best part of their day, week, month, and year. And then I'd slowly integrate them back into a situation where there are distractions, such as another dog, such as another person. But correcting the dog on a prong collar for that would be massively detrimental. How do I teach my dog the boundaries of the yard so I don't need a fence? Much love from Sweden. Well, a long line? I, I heavily believe in fenced-in yards. I really believe in it. Invisible fences aren't as good because things can get into your yard. Collars don't work. The dog has to get shocked to not go outside the yard. I'm not a big fan. I like a fence. I realize a lot of people live somewhere where that's not possible, but you're just at a disadvantage there. There's nothing like having a fenced yard for a dog. I wouldn't entertain at this point. I would never entertain getting a dog if I didn't have a fenced area just because I'm going to be at a massive disadvantage. So if you don't have that, you just have to accept that you're at a disadvantage, but I would get a 30 foot long line and a flat collar. And anytime the dog tried to leave the boundary, I would just block them with the leash if I had to. Which dog do you think has the happiest life? Your working dogs or your pet dogs? That's a great question. Um, I honestly think both because my pet dogs are completely different animals from my working dogs. Therefore, they both require and need very different things. So, and my pet dogs are seniors, you know, they're 12 years old. So they just kind of lounge around and enjoy retirement. 
but I think that they have an equally happy life to my working dogs who don't just lounge around. My Malinois wouldn't be happy if they were pets just lounging around the house because there's a massive part of them that isn't being fulfilled. So that all depends on the genetics of the dog. What's going to lead to a happy life with a dog? Well, what are their genetics? If it's a Belgian Malinois, they need to be worked vigorously, regularly, mentally. And that's what I do. Therefore, I believe they have quite a happy life. Now, they can't do whatever they want, whenever they want, but neither can we. You know what? I don't feel like going to work today. I'm not going to go. <laughs> well, you have to. You know what? I, I don't feel like eating today. Well, you kind of have to. You know, I'm stopped at a red light. I don't really feel like stopping. Well, you have to. So I give my working dogs a structure. I give them an avenue to exercise all of their genetics. And just because they can't do whatever they want, whenever they want, i.e. being crated, um, that doesn't mean that they're not happy. Hi from the UK. Thanks for all your awesome content. Thank you for watching. Pup coming in January. Realized I don't know anyone with good dogs to socialize them with in the methodical way you mentioned. Any suggestions? What's your definition of socialize? If your definition of socialize involves physical interaction, I'm not really on the same page as you are. You can take your dog to a hardware store where there's other people that have their dogs on leashes. You have your puppy on a leash. You can walk through the store. You can never have them make physical contact with people and dogs and still socialize them. That's my definition. I can be in a very social situation like going out to a bar or restaurant, maybe going to a party. I can be there with my family. I can be there by myself. I can be there with a friend. And I would consider that outing a social experience even when I don't interact with or physically touch everyone there. Say you go out on a date to a nice restaurant. It's social. It's social. You're sitting at the table with the person that you're out with. You're conversating. You're laughing. Whatever's happening. That's social. Just because you don't hug everyone in the restaurant or sniff everyone in the restaurant, it doesn't mean that you're not social. So for me, socializing a puppy, it really doesn't mean that they're interacting and touching people and dogs. They just need to be around them. It's actually better. This is where you'll really see the genetics of your dog, but it's actually better to put them in those social situations and have them just interact with you. For me, that makes a lot of sense. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Hi, I'm the owner of a three-month-old wolf dog, and I can't get his attention. Food and toys doesn't work. Well, going back to what I said a little while ago, dog training is extremely difficult. You don't have anything that that dog values. Therefore, you're not going to be able to train that dog. So... I don't know what my advice would be for that. I really don't. Your dog's lifestyle, I guarantee, is completely out of whack. You're living with your dog in a way that I would never, ever live with the dog. So the whole lifestyle of the dog needs to be changed in order for that to change. I bet you that dog that has no interest in food or a toy from you I guarantee that dog's off-leash free-roaming most of the day, most days. I would guarantee it, whether it's in the yard or in your house, I bet you a million dollars the norm for them is off-leash free-roaming. And what off-leash free-roaming actually means is that your dog does whatever it wants, whenever it wants. 
unless there's physical barriers like walls and baby gates. Well, he can't go upstairs. We got a gate. I would guarantee that dog that has no interest, the norm, he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants. That's your problem. Hello from Sheffield in the UK. What's up, Lucy? Love your Patreon. Thank you. Healing going well and the around command. My dog barks at me when we're training for his food. Any tips on reducing this? That's when I would add negative reinforcement on a slip lead for sure. Negative reinforcement. That's going to take something away, the leash pressure, that makes your dog more likely to do that in the future. So negative reinforcement for sure on that one. But look at this comment. And look, I'm not trying to tell you to, to pay me money to join the Patreon. My YouTube's free. There's probably thousands of hours of content on there. But this person, healing is going well. The around command is going well. All their training is going well. And the reason is because they've invested in learning about training. My YouTube channel is free. It's simply an investment of your time and energy, not your money. If you have a dog that's not healing, if you have a dog that's not eager to learn or work for you, you have not invested enough in learning how to train your dog most of the time. Hey, Andy, my girlfriend just got a toy poodle who has some confidence issues. That's not surprising at all, Chris, especially in his new home. He seems to be getting better as time goes on, but what should she do to help boost confidence? Completely eliminate off-leash free roam, which I guarantee is going on. She's telling the puppy, do whatever you want, whenever you want, most of the time. And if that's the case, you can't really influence the puppy because you've already told them you do whatever. So you're out of the picture there. That puppy's lifestyle needs to be drastically changed. And all the interactions that puppy has morning, noon, and night need to be coming from a training perspective and not, oh my God, I'm so happy I have a puppy. This is so cute and fun perspective. Do you know who American Standard Dog Training is? I've heard of them. No comment. Armel broke his tooth off after five minutes because I left the room. Any advice? <laughs> Why is your Malinois unattended in the house? is the better question. Sparkling water, deal with it. Any advice? My advice is to radically change your dog's lifestyle and every interaction that you have with him. Chris says, with the poodle puppy, she just wants to cuddle him and give him treats for no reason all the time. Yep, people that aren't educated in dog training who own dogs cause issues 100% of the time. Scrolling, lost my place. Oh, she says, broke a tooth in the crate. It sounds like the dog has some really serious anxiety in the crate. Probably comes from separation anxiety. Um, that's unfortunate about the tooth though. Sorry to hear that. Wasting too much energy thrashing on the bite. How to use it on pushing and countering. PSA is the goal. Yeah, when a dog's biting, you don't want them thrashing and pulling. You want them driving in and pushing. How to develop that? Um, I'm trying to think what videos I have. The best thing you can do is constantly be backing up and use a very rigid toy, like a huge, thick bite wedge. Um, constantly backing up, controlling your collar, all that stuff matters. A video is really best, though. I can't really describe that 
great, but you need a big, hard, rigid toy, and you need to constantly be backing up with it and encouraging the dog to drive in. Good evening from Brazil. Let's go. Hi from Spain. Seven-month-old German Shepherd, pet dog, mix. I don't let him socialize with other dogs since I don't know them. I don't want him to turn reactive. I want him to be neutral. Best way to build this, you're doing it. Reactivity has absolutely nothing to do with not socializing your dog. It's a lifestyle issue. It's a training issue. It's the dog's mentality. Trust me, you can have the most social dogs in the world who are extremely leash reactive. So they're definitely not one and the same. Keep doing what you're doing. Hey, Andy, want to teach my... Check Shepherd, 21 months to run up to target and bark, but not bite. He just wants to bite. Dogs love to bite. I hear that. I'll pick up my puppy Malinois next weekend. It's my first. Wanted one for a year now. Still wanted to find a good breeder and the right individual for me. Have had pointing dogs in the last 20 years. Good luck. New tier three subscriber checking in. What's up, Nick? Welcome aboard. Looking forward to our call on Wednesday. Absolutely. Level three Patreon. You get access to all the training videos, all the decoy training videos, and a little monthly exchange with your boy. I believe it to be a good investment. So thank you, Nick. In a Patreon video, you demonstrated how to use a bungee to improve the bite of a young Malinois. The local dog sports supplier here sells bungee in various lengths, seven feet to 50 feet. Do you have a preference? Um, probably like 10-ish feet is my preference for a bungee. If the dog knows the sit command but doesn't do it, is it uh, effective to use the prong and pull up slightly to make the dog sit? We see many trainers do that. I mean, look, Hugh, you could do it, and you'll certainly accomplish your sit by pulling up on a leash and prong collar. So you could do that, and you could accomplish a sit, but here's the question. When the leash and prong come off, and your dog is in the same scenario, did applying that leash pressure work? That's the question that you have to ask yourself. And just because you see many trainers do something, that absolutely doesn't mean that it's right. Um, I've seen a million veterinarians recommend your dog get spayed and neutered at six months. It doesn't mean it's true at all. I've seen them recommend food that are horrible for the dog. So just because you see a bunch of people do it, it doesn't make it right. Um, is it effective? It's effective as long as you always have a leash and prong collar on your dog. But does your dog actually know the command? Does your dog actually want to do the command? Is it, does pulling up on a leash and prong inspire the dog to execute that command in the future? We shall see. Gosh dang, I keep losing my spot. A lot of questions today. Thank you all for being here. I try to scroll just a little bit and it just throws me all out of whack. Wow, everyone needs to hear this. There's such misinformation about socialization out there. Would you ever want to go on a national television to announce this stuff? Ah, uh, no, I wouldn't, Ashley. I, I like my platform form here. I, I like playing by my own rules. Going on TV, that's a whole machine there. I, I like my own machine. So whether, you know, 30 some odd thousand people from my YouTube hear it, I think those number, numbers will keep getting bigger. And I think over the next couple of years, I'm going to have more reach here on this platform than I ever would on a TV show. So stay tuned. What's the most important thing to do with your new puppy, in your opinion, Andy? Develop engagement. Don't worry about training a command. Don't worry about leash manners. Don't worry about train engagement. Biggest thing with a puppy. Most important thing. Hello from the Netherlands. What's up? 
Dog trainers that work with reactive dogs use prong collars, slip leads, and gentle leaders to correct them, and they seem to work well, and the dog trainers who only use treats don't seem to work well. Yeah, that's why, that's why I don't only use treats. I use positive reinforcement, I use negative reinforcement, I use positive punishment, and I use negative punishment. Those four areas make up learning theory. Those make up operant conditioning. This has been studied at length of how dogs learn. So, of course, if a trainer only uses treats, that's assuming that they only use positive reinforcement and or negative punishment. So, they're doing 25% or 50% of what makes a dog learn. So, of course, they're going to be at a deficit there. Dog trainers that work with reactive dogs use prong collars, slip leads, and gentle leaders to correct them. They seem to work. Okay. Question. I got a 10-month-old shelter male two months ago. Vet says she has socializing fears but not aggressive. What's the best way to socialize since we missed the 8- to 10-week puppy window? 10-month-old shelter... Look, that has nothing to do with socialization. It honestly, it has, ab your dog and their mindset and behavior has absolutely nothing to do with, they didn't play with a bunch of dogs. This is coming from their lifestyle. Every interaction, every experience that they've had up until this point that you have them is what makes them the way that they are. Don't worry about socializing with other dogs. Worry about training your dog. Worry about becoming the most important thing, the most valuable thing to your dog. That's where you got to put your energy. How to get your dog to be neutral around other dogs when you didn't watch Andy Kruger before. Big mistake. Love the podcast, by the way. Thank you. That's a great comment. How, your dog to be neutral, you need to be the most valuable thing. I know I'm a broken record. It's all the same. You need to be the most important thing to your dog. You need to need to develop perfect engagement with food. That's how you create a neutral dog. What's the best way to tell people, no, they cannot pet my dog whenever I'm out with him? Here's what you do. Hi, can I pet your dog? Sorry, they're in training. That's the best way to do it. Go to Amazon, get yourself a little $30 vest that says do not pet. Slap that on them. For example, uh, Zach George only uses positive reinforcement only to train other dogs, but he never shows reactive dogs become as possible, correcting them with treat. Yeah, I don't know about any of that stuff. Uh, when talking, when taking out puppy to potty on lead, I don't expect heel. Is this wrong where we should always be formal or lead or potty? Bread? No, absolutely not. Look, your dog needs to learn the heel command and they need to learn the free command. Free means clock out. Free means go to the end of the leash, pull, sniff, do whatever you want. That's what free means. So when you give the dog a command, you're telling the dog to clock in. When you tell the dog their release command, you're telling them that they can clock out. So you definitely want to have both. Took a break from hold conditioning for a while, and now coming back to it, Lincoln exhibits stress by whining and mouthing when I reach for the hold. Easy to block him, but am I doing something wrong? Mm. No, I don't think you're doing something wrong. I mean, I'd probably have to see it, but if the dog gets stressed, it's your job to navigate them through that stress. Your dog being under stress is definitely not a bad thing. It's just a thing. People experience stress from all cultures, ages, and all walks of life. It's a normal part of being. It's built into our DNA for a reason. So if your dog's experiencing stress, you have to navigate them through that stress with effective training techniques, but if the dog is super stressed, like every time you ever do it, then you're probably doing something wrong.
sorry for not handling the chat live thing. It's my first time chatting. Watch a bunch of them. So anyway, no need to apologize. Thank you for all your great content and honest advice. No problem. Thanks for being here. Have you heard of the handbook? Of applied dog behavior and training. I'm looking for some scientific dog behavior literature and look to be, no, nope, I've never heard of that, so I can't really speak on it. I might be writing a book, though. I'm just going to throw that out there. Coming in like two years. Oh. When working dog number one outside, how do you keep dog number two crated inside the house quiet? Barks constantly wanting to join. Please do the face react of making fun here. I'm using food too much. Look, Emily, here's the thing. It needed to be like that since day one. Like owning two dogs, I keep them separate for a while because of this. You have two dogs, you pull one out of the crate. The other one just goes ballistic in the crate. That's separation anxiety. That's because the dog has spent more time with the other dog than not. You have to totally keep that separate. Look, my advice for right now is to put that crate in a location where you can barely hear them, if hear them at all, and just ignore the dog and leave them in there a while. I've learned so much from your YouTube videos. Best use of free time. Both dogs are doing great. Thanks, Cheryl. Studies show that positive reinforcement is the only training you should use, which is misleading. And the studies, yeah, here's the thing about studies, though. Whatever you want to believe, you can go online and find a study for it. You could find a study, probably, why McDonald's is super healthy for you. Finding a study, you can find anything. You can find anything. Saludos from Colombia. What's up? Taking my 10-month-old Malinois to her first bite work training class tomorrow. Nice. Super excited, but approaching with no expectation. You should add the super chat feature so we can donate as we ask a question. That would be cool. I should do that. I would appreciate it. I should do that. Good luck with the bite work. If you have a good helper slash trainer, you don't need to know anything. You just let them do the work and they'll train you too. Let me know how that goes. How do I anti-socialize my dog? LOL. Big love, Andy, from Manchester, UK. <laughs> Neutral. Neutral is best. Okay, y'all. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. If you made it to the end of this video... I give you a big thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. New videos out on YouTube for free every single Monday. It don't matter if it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, 4th of July, holiday weekend. Every single Monday, I post new videos on here. Every single week, I post new videos on the Patreon. So thanks, y'all, for being here. Thanks for supporting. Buy my merch. Yep, just finished up some questions. Bye later. All right, y'all. Peace out. Train your dog. Train your dog. Be the most important thing to your dog. Be the most valuable thing to your dog. Stop letting them mingle.